I'm excited to spend some time with you today on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Got my mug of the month. Love this one. Onward Christian Soldiers. One of the best that I think Hayden's ever done. It's a mug. It's a poster. It's a three by five foot poster as well. And of course we have the t-shirt. Very cool. And you know, what better thing to put in that mug? And it would be almost a, a crime if you didn't have Headbangers Brew in the mug. Headbangers Brew, our very own coffee. And uh, we've got some exciting news coming up. Mm -mm, can't tell you yet. Stay tuned. But our coffee is about to expand. I like that. And uh, right now, we have it in ground, whole bean, decaf, K-cups, we have our other blend called Holy Cacao with cacao beans in it. And then, of course, our tea, Intensity. Mm hmm. Crimson Brew. And lots of mugs and lots of t shirts and the best swag on earth, just saying. Right here. We are MetalEarFamily.com. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining me today. Can I just say one more time how much I enjoy spending this time with you? Thank you for tuning in. Here's our question for today. Dear Pastor Bob, some days my life seems to be ruled by my pet peeves. Crazy drivers, annoying Facebook comments, and our woke society in general. It is a it is difficult to move past these irritations. How do you do it? You don't seem to be affected. <laughs> oh, if you only knew. You know, I think we're all affected. There are always those things that bug us. And, and my married friends tell me that you never know how much they bother you till you get married. And your husband or your wife has that little thing they do that just kind of you know, irritates you. But people do that with us all the time. Do I have mine? Yes, I definitely do. The turning signal on your car is one of those. Now, I'm not good at guessing. And sometimes you just have to guess what are people going to do? Are they turning this way, that way? Are they going straight? You never know. And in Tennessee, it's a thing. Nobody uses turning signals, and I have had some near crashes, near fender benders, whatever, from people that haven't used their turning signal. I don't know what they're doing. And, uh, you know, my grandfather taught me how to drive, and he taught me to use my turning signal no matter where I was. And I learned how to drive in the wheat fields in Montana and all those dirt roads where nobody else was at. And uh, and I would make a turn and he'd say, you forgot to use your turning signal. I said, but, but Grandpa, there's nobody here. And he said, no, no, that's not the point. The point is, if you get used to using it, you'll always use it. It's automatic then. And he was right. So I get to the end of my driveway and I put on my turning signal. I just do it automatically when I change lanes on the highway, whatever. But the people around me that don't do it bother me. And along with that, you know, it used to really bother me that it seems like a lot of old people leave their turning signals on. Have you noticed that? They'll put their turning signal on and then it's on for a long time if it doesn't turn off. And you, you don't know what they're doing. You think, are they turning? No, they didn't. No, they didn't turn again. And they just keep going. And that turning signal when you're following them is a little bit of a source of irritation. And now I am one. I, I realize so many times that I have just left my turning signal on for a while because I don't hear it anymore now. That little click, click, click that 
the turning signal makes. When you get hard of hearing, you don't hear it and you forget that it's on. And sometimes those people that are your pet peeves become you. I know. So, you know, the best piece of advice I can give is to live your life and not others. And the more you develop a heart for people, the more you are tolerant of people. It's like a father with his son. His son will continue to do some things that are a little irritating. Sometimes getting out of, you know, out of uh, uh, decorum and sometimes throwing a fit and yeah. And the father may discipline him, but he loves him through it. And he's tolerant of so much. And he shows patience and forgiveness. Why? Because he loves him. And we need to do the same thing. Showing patience and forgiveness and loving people through their shortcomings as we hope <laughs> that they will love us through ours as well. Well, turn with me to Ephesians from my favorite Bible, the Metal Bible, by the way. We have these in stock. So Ephesians 4, 1 and 2. So I, the prisoner for the Lord, appeal to you to live a life worthy of the calling to which you've been called. That is, to live a life that exhibits godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, and mature behavior. We're going to go through those next week, most likely. All four of those, what a great list. A life that expresses gratitude to God for your salvation. You see, when I have those things, when I have godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, mature behavior, it's an expression of gratitude to God for my salvation. It's a part of living who I am now, Christ in me. And then it says, with all humility. Well, there we go. Forsafe, forsaking self-righteousness. You know, what does that mean? Whenever somebody criticizes you, how do you react? Defensive? Giving excuses why you just did something? I have some friends that I can never correct. They're good friends, but they just don't take correction. And so I don't. Because I know that they're going to be on the defensive when I do, and here we go. But, you know, it says forsaking self-righteousness. In other words, saying you right away, you know, you're right, I was wrong. And being able to do that. So with all humility and gentleness, maintaining self-control with patience, bearing one another's uh, burdens and loving them with unselfish love. Wow. You see, that's what we're supposed to be doing. And those little irritations that get to us, well, it's part of our self-righteousness. It really says... You bother me because you don't do things as well as I do. And I've lived enough years to know that that separation sometimes crosses over. And we find ourselves doing the very things that irritate us about somebody else. Hmm. When I love someone, I overlook things. When I live a life worthy of the calling to which I've been called. That is, to live a life that exhibits God's character. Then I begin to overlook those things because they're not the things that matter. And instead of being irritated with the person, I can love them and I can have a heart for them because that's what Christ would do as well. Would Christ be upset about somebody leaving their turning signal on? There's a good question. There's a thought to ponder. <laughs>
Folks, don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.